Hey everybody, Rich with PCC. Hey, we're here on site today at Trident Automation in Kimberly, Wisconsin. Trident is a Siemens solution partner and I'm joined here by Yogesh from, from Trident and he's going to tell us a little bit about what Trident does. Trident primarily works in the process control uh, technology area. Uh, we, we primarily focus on uh, delivering products which, which help our customers improve their pr processes. Uh, we work in the pro process control area with uh, chemicals, pr uh, renewables, paper industry, um, and, and do DCS control. We're going to talk about burn management system. Burn management system and combustion control systems are like a segment within the process control industry. And this is a huge point, pain point for a lot of our customers because uh, anytime you see have a boiler or a, a TO or uh, like some of the some of our guys say you have a chimney in a plant you have a burner burner control systems out there uh, and steam and uh, all these are kind of derived out of these boilers and controlling them is a big uh, big deal because uh, safety is very very important um, so the burner management system primarily focus on NFPA 8586 uh, and then and, and we have to design our systems around that uh, standard. So that's what we do very well at Trident. Here we have a small burner that we use for testing and then we can light it up for you and we can show you how it all works. Okay, let's do that. All right, so burner management systems. Um, I, I think that's almost a scary topic for some people, right? Because sure. we're talking about flames, there's a lot of safety involved. So tell me a little bit about how burner management has been handled in the past and where you found pains at. Sure, sure. So in the past, burner management was kind of a black box for the program. And uh, for your trips and doing a lot of troubleshooting, it was kind of a pain in the, in the past. And everything was wired in series. Um, it was kind of just an unknown. It started and when it ran, it ran. Um, and then when there was a trip, it was, it was troubleshooting for the maintenance people. Um, it was issues um, trying to find the, the trips and what the issues on the trips and everything like that. So. Um, in the past, it was kind of hard to identify the root cause of what tripped, um, and because it was wired in series, it was kind of the trying to hard to find the the root cause of the problem. Okay, so I think we talked a little earlier about the the analogy of I've got a conveyor belt with fifty e stops on it. Yeah. Which one? Which one did somebody press, or which one did a contact block fall off of? Traditionally, with a safety control system with safety relays, those would all be wired in, in series, and yeah. you wouldn't know which one until you went and tested each box. Yep. Same idea here. Yeah, in the, in, the, in, the, in the existing, but in the new in the new BMS system, our Trident BMS solution, uh, we bring in all the inputs separate, okay. so we're able to identify in the program, you know, the, fir the first out um, initial cause of the of the trip. So it's easily uh, for maintenance. It's easily boom. That is our, the root cause of the issue that brought you out. Um, okay. So troubleshooting and uh, down time could possibly re-reduce that. Okay, so that black box goes away yep. and in comes what for your control system? Um, so we, we have a Siemens solution. Yes, we, uh, we run a Siemens 1200 series or a 1500 series depending on whether you're doing a single zone or you're doing multiple zones. Uh, safety rated controllers, safety rated I.O. so that the, there's a separate program running within the processor that is the safety program that can be locked so that somewhat similar to the black box once it's in it's nobody can change it we have the ability to do that because it is password encrypted so that we are able to unlock it if changes need to be made we can make that unlike the black box system which was you bought it that's it right so you were taking taking advantage of the best of both worlds right we can password protect it it, it has the um it, it has the, the the signature right for yes, the safety yeah. program that's established but at the same time we're using off-the-shelf products that are programmable you can modify that program makes it very flexible yes and now yes. we can bring all those inputs for those devices the, those failure points we can bring those back to the plc for monitoring for diagnostic purposes yes, yes. okay yep, yep. Right. using that safety uh, you know plc you know you have in there your safety task and then you have your regular code in there it's almost like using a separate plc within a plc and like brad was saying yes we can you know once we verify the code um and do a checkout you know we can lock that code so preventing anyone from doing any changes and being password protective okay well let's take a look at the components of the system all right brad so we've got a complete burner management panel here in front of us right yes and um this, this is ready to go to a customer Yes, this is ready to go to a customer. This, we, we 
our panels we try to continue to keep the same layout so that there's consistency from panel to panel so even though this is a single burner panel if we were to do this for multiple burners each panel would be laid out identically so troubleshooting wise if it's in if it's on one panel in one place it's going to be that same place each of the other panels okay great and as far as the customer's installation is concerned uh, you can provide this brand new new panel all together with a new back panel or you could plug this into something they have existing yes we can take the existing panel that's there we get the size for the cabinet order an identical panel build this up on that panel so that way all we do is strip out their panel put the new panel in place and connect the wires okay okay so let's talk about the controls itself so the heart of this system right now is the is what we have here the the s7 1200 safety plc with the adjacent safety io yes yes um, so the it's split up because the the input and outputs on the processor are non-safe correct and then everything attached is the safety module so that's all on your safe end so the, we, the way we have it set up is that the valving and everything is on that safe output side and then we have a, a heartbeat that communicates out to the watchdog timer that if something were to happen to the PLC and it loses that this that heartbeat stops this will automatically shut the system down. So we got safety built onto safety. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Back up to the back up to the back up. Okay. And then as far as you had mentioned earlier, multiple zone systems, that would be S7 1500 based. So you're obviously using a different form factor of IO in that situation. Yes, we can do this in the 1200 or 1226 uh, M safety uh, IO, or we can do it in safety SPHA. Okay. So we can do a distributed setup yes. as well. Okay, all right. Um, and so I noticed, when we talked about this earlier, we've got the PLC and then we also have a bank of safety relays. Can you just quickly let us know what the difference is and why we have this versus the, the IO on the, on the PLC? We try to convert all of our, all of the instrumentation in that over to 24 volt. And then some of it cannot be converted over. So that's where the safety relays fall into place is that does our 24 to 120 volt conversion or 120 volt into 24 volt into the processor but this also gives us the ability to monitor the relay as well we get a safety output from there back to the plc that continue that gives us that signal back that if we told the relay to fire we get that signal back into the plc that says yes the relay fired you know did the starter pick up so we know where the point of failure comes from going out to whatever we're turning on. So they're individually monitored, but it's giving you that 120 volt interface to the field that's necessary yes. in a lot of cases. Yes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so Patrick, we just took a look at the control system that you build for running the BMS system, but it's obviously super important that a customer has confidence that that thing does what it's supposed to do. So you have a full blown test set up here to actually run a burner. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so here's Trident's demo burner that we put together. Um, so what we wanted to do is be able to actually, our fuel train, we got the pilot valves, your main block valves, gas low and high pressure. And these are things you're gonna see actually on a live system uh, burner. Obviously small scaled here. Um, we have our damper controls. All of these inputs you're gonna see, we actually physically tie to our, our panel. So we can actually, when we do our internal uh, factory acceptance tests, we can, um, all the inputs, there's nothing really simulated at all. We try to identify the actual physical inputs so we can simulate from A to Z our sequence then. Um, so going from here, uh, we can do our troubleshooting and uh, I guess we, um, we can start up our sequence and sh show you how it actually works. All right, works. let's take a look at it, yeah, let's see. So once we click start, we want to verify that we do not see our purse position switch and we go through a couple steps within here. Um, we jump to the wait for combustion air damper. Um, we want to verify that we get to our purge switch. Um, so that takes about 25 seconds that we have in our sequence. Once that is complete, we start an another timer waiting for purge to complete. Uh, depending on your burner and your burner size, it can be anywhere from 2 minutes to it could even be to 12 minutes. Um, so when we wait for that to complete, um, once that completes, then we go to a damper travel, we go to low fire position. And we need to, we need to um, I think that's 25 seconds that we have in our program. And that can be changed depending on your burner and your damper size. Um, once that is met, 
Then we go to our uh, modulating gas fire, so low fire position on our modulating gas. And um, then we jump to false flame detection. So within false flame detection, you want to verify that igniter is on and we do not see flame. We verify that we don't have any leaks in our valves and for some reason our, our flame scanners do not pick up that spark. One is, once that is complete, we, we go to complete, uh, open up the pilot valves. So we need to see our pilot flame for 10 seconds. And it needs to be a, a steady flame and it needs to be hold for 10 seconds. Once that is complete, we, we verify for five. Um, then we go ahead and open the main block valves. The main block valves need to be on as, lo and as, lo as well as the pilot valves. That'll be held for 10, 10 seconds. Once that is complete, we'll go ahead and shut the pilot valves and we need to see flame, our main flame, with our main block valves open for 10 seconds. Once that's complete, then we, go, we, we then release to modulate and the DCS now has control. So now we've been talking a lot about the value of having a PLC-based control system, getting the diagnostics that you need to be able to troubleshoot. What happens when something goes wrong? So what I'll do is I'll say that we'll have a low gas pressure. I'll, I'll simulate a fault. So there it is, your boiler tripped, uh, alarms would be setting out in the field. Okay. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your HMI. Okay. So we can take a look at that. Yeah, let's take a look. So then we can go to our interlocks, and right there you can see red is gas pressure low, you can see our first out, and even though that I click reset, and the, we, if I even go in here and now, it, now it's an okay, but it does not go away. Uh, so now you physically have to have you know an operator, a maintenance person come look at it. You identify that yes, we have gas low pressure. Now you can come in and reset. Okay. And now it would seem to me that if you had one problem that was repeating over time, mm -hmm. that becomes kind of a maintenance obvious thing to take care of. Yeah. Does this system record that and, and, and able to kind of get a, kind of a report of what's happened over the last period of time? Yeah, so absolutely, yeah. So here in our HMI, our first out, we have a timer, or a counter, I should say, and every time that was your initial root cause why your system tripped, uh, the counter is counted up. And so we suggest our uh, customers every month, maybe quarter, um, go in there and have a maintenance login and uh, go in and take a look at, hey, you know, um, a valve is opened and we're not seeing that limit switch. That'll show up on here on your first outs. And um, that, that brought us down five times in the last month. So obviously we need to have maintenance, look at the wiring, maybe replace the limit switch and potentially reduce your downtime in the future. Okay, okay, great. Well, awesome. Well, it's very obvious that you can take an application from cradle to grave as far as a customer having an existing application, needing a controls retrofit, you can put that panel together, you can test it for them, you can show it to them here, and then you can go start that up in the field and get that running for them. Yes, absolutely. Yep. All right, well thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.